Hello and happy Saturday. This is Brian. Today I'm going to make a video primarily for my son Adam. I'm just going to use YouTube as the delivery mechanism. But others can watch this video too. It might be a little educational. And the video is going to be on why this electric motor I salvaged from an oilless air compressor just won't make a good project motor. So I'm going to send it back to recycling. For those of you who don't know, I have quite the collection of electric motors. I save them because I know how to identify good ones. And I keep them in hopes that I'll someday do projects with them. I came across this electric motor yesterday when I was recycling some metal. My friend had an oilless air compressor that he wanted to recycle and since I was going to the recycling yard I took it down there for him. He already had it disassembled, the tank and the compressor and the controls. And while I was throwing the electric motor into the metal recycling dumpster at the recycling center, I noticed something about the motor. I noticed that it was a capacitor start, capacitor run motor. Those are very useful motors. So I kept it thinking we could use it. I had difficulties taking it apart. I realize now what went wrong. And I realize now why this won't be a good motor to save. It's going to go back to recycling. And I thought I'd just make a video, A, to show Adam why I was fighting it and what went wrong. But for everybody else, I'm going to do a little bit of education on what a capacitor start, capacitor run motor is. So this will be like... This won't be a college level 100 class or 101 class. It's going to be like a 200 level class. So let's get into the garage and let's start talking electric motors. Let's talk capacitor start, capacitor run motors. And let me explain why this motor from the oilless air compressor just isn't going to work out for a nice project motor and why it's going to go back to recycling. So stand by. First of all, what is it about this motor from this air compressor that I see that I liked? And when you see motors like this and you see these two humps on them, these are for capacitors. And when you see two of them, you know it's for capacitor start, capacitor run motor. And those are the best motors to have because capacitor start, capacitor run motors, and remember we're talking single phase motors here, single phase like you have in your household. Capacitor start, capacitor run have the highest starting torque and the highest running torque. These are valuable motors to have. These are the good motors. Starting torque is everything. In fact, right in the background you can see my little grinder. I made a video about it just a week ago on adding a start relay and capacitor to the grinder that really brought it alive. But these are the good motors. Here's another example. And Adam, this video is kind of made for you, but somebody else may be watching it. This is my personal air compressor. Something that was a big part of Adam's young life. He ran this thing silly in my garage. But see with the motor, capacitor start, capacitor run, because it has the two humps. That makes this a really good air compressor. Also, if you look at the nameplate of this motor, of course it's 120 volts, that's what we use in the United States. It's 15 amp. So this motor was made by the manufacturer to load up a single circuit. Typically we have 15 amp circuits in our homes. In my garage I do have some 20 amp circuits, they're far better. But for a 15 amp circuit, this is the biggest electric motor that you can run without tripping the circuit breaker. So that translates into the biggest air compressor that you can have on 120 volts. So this is a nice motor. It's a nice powerful motor. Now this motor does not say the, the horsepower and it does not say the RPM. But we can look up what the horsepower would be for 120 volts and 15 amps. And I'm going to show you here how to tell the speed. Here comes the lesson on electric motors. This motor you can see the windings. On the outside of the motor are the heavier gauge wires. Those are the run windings. They have to take a large amount of current 
for a long time and they have to dissipate the heat so they use nice big windings and they're always on the outside of the motor in this particular motor I can see two sets of windings here's one and on the other side of the motor here's the other so this is a two-pole motor Two-pole motors have a synchronous speed of 3,600 RPM in the United States where we have 60 cycles. So this is a two-pole 3,600 RPM motor. And by the way, that's what my air compressor is too. On the inside, this is the start winding, always towards the rotor. There's smaller gauge wire because the start winding is only in the circuit for just a brief instant. As the motor starts up, start windings get hot really fast. Then when the motor's running, the other capacitor kicks in and feeds just a little bit of current through the, the winding. So this winding doesn't see as much current as the run winding does. So the start winding can be made with smaller diameter wire. When you look at motors, if you're buying a motor at a yard sale or something like that, the start winding is almost always the one that's black and burned out. But look at this motor. This is a good motor. This is a good capacitor start, capacitor run motor. And the windings are in good shape. And the start switch is in fine shape. I'll try to get to the contacts here wherever they are. I can't quite find them here. But they're in, they're in good shape, trust me. This thing has needle bearing in it. This is a decent motor, but it's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is this. It has a shaft diameter of some strange size. It translates to even some stranger size, which translates to something even stranger yet. I'm going to get into the bore, Adam. This is why I had such a hard time taking it apart. So what's good about this motor, the reason I wanted to save it from recycling, it's a capacitor start, capacitor run. This would be an expensive motor. It's 15 amp. Great motor. What's bad is the shaft extends only about 0.65 inches. Extends from the housing, that is. And I'll show you why in a second here, why that is. So it's not useful. You can't attach anything. And if you did attach something, where are you going to find a pulley that's this size? Of course, on your lathe, you could make it that size. And then the shaft diameter. So it's for this reason that you just can't attach anything in the field to this shaft. That's why it's going back to the recycling. The so-so part is, well, it's a 3600 RPM motor. I don't know, for projects, you like to use 1800 RPM motors typically. But 3600 are used on a lot of things. That's what my air compressor is. And I didn't write it down, but this motor is also a foot-mounted motor. Now let's go talk about this shaft and why I had such a hard time taking it apart last night. Here are the components for that air compressor. Look at the piston. And this is the this is the cylinder sleeve too. So I imagine that's all replaceable. And this is some sort of man-made material. It's not metal. I, I suppose these oilless air compressors are serviceable in that you just put a new sleeve thing in and a new piston thing in. And here's the housing. Here, here's, here's that foot-mounted base, by the way. And here, here's what tricky thing they did when they made this thing. The forward bearing. Take a look at that. I'm going to try focus. Normally, when you put bearings on, you press the bearing on all the way until the bearing seats up on the shoulder. The bearing gets pressed on all the way to the shoulder. That's how bearings are typically put on. But not in this case. What this retarded design did, there's a nice focus, is they parked the bearing right at that specific location. And the bearing's tight on the shaft, trust me. I had to use the gear puller to pull it out this distance. And that's what I 
messed up yesterday and I was trying to take it apart. Let me show you why. Let me grab the housing here. Here's the housing. This housing was also pressed on. I imagine what they did is they heated the housing and put the housing on. Let me get it back on. There it's back on. I opened up the housing a little bit by removing a little bit of metal. That's wrong. I realize now what they did. By freezing the bearing onto the shaft and by freezing this housing onto the bearing, now there is no end movement in this whole mechanism. That was by design. So I used the puller to pull this housing off because I had to move that bearing. And then I thought that because this housing was on the bearing so tight it was poor machining, but I realize now it's by design. I mean, if a person had to put this back together to use it, you would put this back on with green Loctite and freeze it in. But notice how this only sticks out about a half an inch. It's a half, it's actually, it's a half an inch plus Fifty thousands. It's a half an inch plus fifty thousands. And the reason it's a half inch is here's the mechanism that turned. And this is definitely, they definitely heated this part up, which is why it had a hard time taking it apart. They probably even froze the end of the shaft with some liquid nitrogen and set this on. Now it won't go on here now because... And it goes on, like I said, right up to, there's 50 thousandths of an inch gap. And that's what keeps it, that's what keeps it together. So now that I got this off, and to get this off, there was just no way to get a gear puller on there. So what I did is I used chisels and stuff to get underneath it and lift it off. And while I was doing that, I initially noticed that I, I was making progress, it seemed. The chisel was going in, but the gap wasn't being reduced. And the reason is, let me try wiggle this off again here. It'll come off. There it comes off. What I was really doing first was moving the bearing down to there. Then the rest of it came apart. So now that I've reset the bearing distance, I could put this motor back together. I'd have to use like some Loctite to seize the bearing onto the housing because that's important that there's no end play and that's what takes that's what guarantees that there is no end play. So if you wanted to use this motor, all you have to attach onto, which would be useless, is just a half inch of a shaft that's somewhere in the 17 millimeters. Now, yeah, in your case, I know you could think about welding on. You know, you could weld on. You could chuck this rotor. I have it in my leather jaws, but you could chuck it into the mill, uh, into the lathe. You could turn it back down you know, to a standard size like five eighths of an inch, but you would never trust it. There's no way you would ever trust that. So, bearing's kind of tight too, I suppose, my pounding on it. But that's how they built this thing. Very, very tricky. That's why I had problem disassembling it. And it's unfortunate because this part of the motor is so good. Capacitor start, capacitor run. Well, to keep this video in around 15 minutes or under 15 minutes, we're just not going to use that motor. So for those of you who've suffered through this video, maybe you got a lesson on why capacitor start, capacitor run motors are so valuable and why you want to keep them when you come across them. They make excellent project motors because they have high starting torque, high running torque. They're the most expensive of the single phase motors. I thought this one would work, but because of the weird shaft diameter and the fact that it only sticks out a half an inch, I just don't think there's anything we can do with this motor. 
I am going to put it back together, I think, and haul it to the recycling yard. It has a lot of good copper in it, and it'll be recycled. So, well, I hope that explains the problems I had taking it apart, why I had problems taking it apart, um, and why it didn't work. And it also explains why it's going back to the scrapyard. But in the case of Adam, if you want any of the other motors from my collection for anything that you might be doing, you know, I have quite the collection. Unlikely I'm going to use them for anything anymore, so come take them. Well, this is Brian. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for watching.